is Stephanie Harper, and this is Eden. Here, my father was king. On the day he died, 17 years ago, I was 23, lonely and afraid. If I'd known then of the nightmare that lay ahead, I think I'd have chosen to die with him. You weren't going to make it, Greg. I am a traffic. I'm a best man here. Nice car. A wedding present? Yep, that's right. Ooh. What's your response Ooh. to critics who say that you're marrying Stephanie for her money? They can say what they like. It doesn't worry us. Greg, what about so the... So uh... it's really a love match, then? Absolutely. Does this mean the end of your uh, tennis career, Greg? No way, mate. No way. And how about your form, Greg? You've got to admit it hasn't been up to scratch lately. Too much of the good life, maybe, eh? You don't want to believe everything you read in the papers. You well, should know that, Robert. <laughs> Is this a, your first marriage, Greg? Yep. I'll miss it if I hang out here too much longer. Right. See you later, guys. See you later. Yeah, just... Good luck. All the best. Greg is here. Okay, move. Let's give it a second. You remember when we were little girls how we used to dream of marrying a handsome prince when we grew up? Yeah. Well, mine finally turned up. Oh, Jilly. I want him. More than I've wanted anything in my life. You look very nice. Honestly? Honestly. Here I am about to follow you down the aisle for the third time, Stephanie Harper, and I haven't even met the groom. Now, where is he? You'll like him. I know you will. <laughs> Jilly, what do you think of this? Oh, la la! He gave you that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never worn anything like this before. Now, I'd watch out if I were you, Steph. I think he's trying to tell you something. <laughs> Talk of the devil, it looks like the groom has finally arrived. That's him. Yes, so the other come back this is what yeah. I'm Hello, matey. Oh, Mr. McMaster. Big day. I mean, yes. Well, we followed all your instructions, sir. I think you'll find everything's under control. Oh, as always with you, matey. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Stephanie. You do look lovely. Thank you. Welcome home, Jilly. How was the trip? Oh, fine, thanks. Good. Bill, did you bring the papers for me to sign? Yes, I did. But I have to tell you, the board weren't happy about it. I didn't expect them to be. You could run Harper Mining and the other companies single-handed if you wanted to. You don't need my help. Bill, you know I couldn't have managed all these years without you. But I do think it would have been wiser, though, if you'd uh, provided for your husband from your personal funds rather than through the company. I don't intend to make the same mistakes again, Bill. I want my husband to be financially independent from the outset. And I don't want it to look like a handout. Oh, well. There's no problem. From this moment, Greg's on the payroll. Thank you. Your happiness is my only concern, Steph. 
Any help you may need, you've only to ask. I know. Well, good luck. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the presence of God and before this gathering to join Greg and Stephanie together in matrimony and to seek on their behalf God's blessing and His grace. before. I think that goes for everyone. Hey, did you and Sassy have any trouble getting the day off boarding school? It really wasn't a problem, Auntie Jilly. Mother always had us out for her weddings. We get time off for good behaviour. That's just the sort of thing your grandfather would have said. Excuse me. Sass! <laughs> Poor kids. Hey. Cheer up, Sass. It's not the end of the world. The main thing is, Mum's happy. Yeah. But why did it have to be you? Very well. Stephanie tells me you've decided against honeymooning in Europe. You're going to fly out to Eden instead. Yes, but not for a month or so. Yeah, good. In that case, maybe you can drop by the office sometime before you leave. I can come in on Monday. All right. Let's say 11.30 afterwards we can have some lunch. I look forward to that, Bill. Give us a chance to get better acquainted. I'll see you on Monday. Very quiet. It's jet lag. Mm. Yeah, it all seemed to go off quite well. Well, let's face it, Stephanie's had plenty of practice. Oh, my detective bitchy you note. Know? I'm sorry, I'm just tired. We no won't stay long. Hmm. What do you make of Marsden? I wouldn't trust him with my loose change. <laughs> <laughs> Sass, champagne. You're so childish. I'll have punch, thank you. Hello? It's all right, forget it. Seems I'm not very popular with my daughter. She'll get over it. How about you? I'm fine. Phil, how about some footage of me with my big son? Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> right, now, smile for the dicky bird. I love you. Well, say something and we'll look like a pair of shop window dummies. <laughs> this is a good year, isn't it? Are you drinking champagne? What will your headmaster say if I send you back slosh? He doesn't care. All the kids are lushes. <laughs> hey, how's it all going? <laughs> Wonderful. It's as if my two other marriages never happened. He knows you didn't mean it, but I did. 
Darling, you haven't officially met Philip Stewart? Philip? Congratulations, Greg. Thank you. And this is my darling Jilly. Hi, congratulations. Thanks. Apart from my children, you're the two people I love most. I want you to be friends. Get together, you two. I want a shot at you. Thanks, Phil. Oh. Stephanie, I've just stepped off a plane. You look beautiful, darling. I don't feel too hot. Oh, you look great, Jilly. <laughs> a bit closer together? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, this is going to be real Academy <laughs> Award stuff. Jeez. Made to the same person for 16 years. Oh, it has its moments. Good and bad. It's certainly never been dull with Jilly. <laughs> Actually, I'm worried about her. Her moods fluctuate so much lately. It seems all right to me. I'm glad she and Greg get on so well. I must admit, I was a bit worried she wouldn't like him. Looks like match point. Jilly, you were fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks, no Father. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh. Good to have a match with a pro every now and again. I can see I'm going to have to give you lessons, Jilly. Fine. You expensive? Very. But I'm also very good. Yes? Yeah. Next. Hello, darling. <laughs> well, <We're lost. laughs> listen, how long are you guys going to spend the day? A month alone in the outback. Oh, Katie will be there, but otherwise it'll just be us, the dingoes, and the wide open spaces. Oh, Greg, you are going to adore Eden. Mm. I want him to love it the way I do. It's the one place I've always been happy. Darling, I've got a great idea. Why don't we get Philip and Jilly to join us at Eden? Well, for the last couple of weeks, anyway. Uh, I don't think Philip will be here. He's got to go back to New York. Well, how about just Jilly, then? Oh, don't be silly. It's your honeymoon. Come on. Our lives together are going to be one long honeymoon. Aren't they, darling? I'll hold you to that. Gosh, Jilly and I haven't been at Eden together for... Mm -hmm. Donkey's ears. Right. Well, it's up to Jilly. Oh, come on, Jilly. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Probably dust in the carburetor. I have to pull the whole bloody thing down and clean it. Hell. It's vapor lock. What? Vapor lock. What's that, Kate? Don't worry. It's the carburetor. It's vapor locked. You've been dawdling. That's what caused it. Katie's awfully good with engines, darling. Will you leave it to me? It's all yours, my dear. I was right. Vapor locked. Might as well take it easy. I've got to wait for it to cool. It's a wonder you haven't opened a garage. Well, don't you worry. I could have if I'd wanted. <laughs> Come on. Does she really know what she's doing? You can always trust Katie, darling. Oh, I do. I do. Come on. Come on. Well, I'm afraid it's the lantern tonight, darling. Katie's a trifle indisposed at the moment. She's the only one who ever understood the generator. I'll bet it's vapor locked. <laughs> if that generator ran on sherry like she does, we wouldn't be in the dark. Katie doesn't drink much. Not much. Well, not that much. Oh, Greg, she's nearly 70. Won't be long. Hey. 
Come here. It's okay. No, it's not. Relax. Honey, I keep telling you, it's gonna be all right. You worry too much. It's going to be wonderful. Hello, Chris. Huh? How was your trip? Interminable. <laughs> Hello, Jilly. Hi, Greg. Welcome to Eden. Have you eaten? I hope you haven't, because Katie's prepared a special lunch. No, no, just some breakfast at Darwin Airport. It was ghastly. <laughs> oh. oh, you'll never guess what we're doing the day after tomorrow. <laughs> we're going on a crocodile hunt. Greg's arranging it. Come inside, I'll get you a cup of tea. You know, if I ever had any doubts about why Greg married me, I haven't any more. He makes life fun. Oh, Jilly, I love him so much. I must be the luckiest woman in the world. I've even agreed to go on this awful crocodile hunt. You know how I feel about killing things. Ah, well, a woman in love will do anything for her man, isn't that right? Yes, 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 yes.
Oh, I couldn't have stood being away another minute. Thank God I missed you. I can't bear the thought of you touching her. Oh, baby, I love you so much. What are we going to do? I can't stand it. Trust me. Keep the noise down. See where he tried to take a bite out of the boat last night. They're huge, aren't they? You think these are big? Well, you meet Yindi Baru. He's an old salty. About 70 years old, 20 foot long. I've been trying to catch him for the last couple of years. He always gives me the slip. Locals have put a price on his head. Reckon he's killed four people already. <laughs> Joe, you're giving me goosebumps. You'll be right, Mrs. Marsden. We'll look after you. You've got no worries. No, she hasn't. I'll be there. Yeah, but watch your step. Get too confident, you might wind up as Croc Tucker. Darling, let's not kill anymore, please. Look, just do it! Me to death. 
there is going to be a great sunset. Best way to see it from the river. Oh, wonderful. We'll take Julie with us. I think she's asleep in a tent. Well, I'll get her up. OK. I'll just go and put something warmer on. OK. I'm not too keen on you going off by yourselves. It'll be dark in about an hour. We're just into romance, Joe. I just want to take the girls where they can get a better look at that fabulous sunset. We won't go far. We'll be careful, I promise. Well, take your rifle just in case. And make sure you're back before dark. Yeah, well, if I get in any strife, I'll fire a shot. Great. Sunset. I'll smash your face in. I warned you about going off by yourself. Whose fault is it? My bloody amateurs! I wish I'd never laid eyes on any of you! It was an accident. I keep telling you, mate. She was photographing the sunset. We hit a log and she slipped and fell in. Now you could tell that anything like that had happened. Oh, I should have. Bastard! Rita, all I'm interested in is finding my wife. What do we do now? I'll call Darwin on the radio. But they'll have no show of getting in here and setting up a search before morning. And then I'm gone. I'm unlicensed and the local fuzz bloody crucified poachers, but I'm damned if I'll go without future work because of you, you mongrel! You want to fight me? Go ahead. Rita! What chance is there of finding her alive? If you really love your wife, fella, pray she's not. Yes. Good girl. It's just you and me. 
I don't have too many visitors here, except for an Abba mate who brings me stuff now and then. Tea and tobacco, you know. Payment gold. He gave me this concoction the Abbas make out of flowers and clay. Pongs a bit, but it'll stop you getting infected. I pulled you out of the river a week back. Bloody miracle. Looks like a smaller croc got hold of you. If it had been one of the big buggers, if you'll pardon the language, he wouldn't be here to tell the tale. I know it hurts bad, girl. But this is a special brew. It'll help the pain. Don't you worry. Old Dave Wells will see you right.
can't stay in bed all the time. Well, last time I was in town was oh, ten years ago. And that was to get my teeth fixed. I got a wife somewhere I owe 20 years alimony to, so I've got to be careful in case they nab me. You'll be needing some clothes. Help yourself. Of course, I don't want to kick you out, but... Well... But the sooner you're on your way, the sooner you can contact your friends, your family. Let them know you're alive. They've been searching for you for over three weeks. The town was full of coppers. But no one can ever find this place. It's secret. Hmm. No one ever comes here unless I bring him. Dave. I'm so frightened to leave here. I still don't remember anything. I don't even know my name. All I know is that maybe I'm married. You give it time, girlie. You give it time. A long time back, before I lost my mind and I got married, I fell in love with a little girl from Mount Isa. She was a publican's daughter, and her name was Tara. You see, her mother only saw one moving picture show in her whole life, and that was gone with the wind. Well, I didn't mind. Had a kind of ring to it, and it suited her. Well, we were sweethearts. Until one terrible day, she... She shot through to Townsville and married a butcher. <laughs> so if it's all right with you, I'll call you Tara. present. It's a tin of old dreams I've got no use for anymore. Opals like that will give you a start. Look at the color. Like fire at night. You'll get a good price for these when you take them in a dough. And don't you let them rub you. Well, I'll see you. run into my missus. Don't you let on, you know where I am. Thank you. Bye. Tara. Bye, babe.
forget your money. There were very good stones you gave me. There's over $3,000, eh? Don't lose it, will you? Are you all right? Ticket to Townsville, please. Return? One way. Can I have your name, please? Tara Wells.